I came to Netcall to study animation. I was so into like cartoons and stuff, I actually wanted to do it. I went there and I sucked so bad, it's not funny. I had studied um, performing arts, I did um, performing arts and um, drama and um, I really enjoyed that and then I um, sort of moved to Wellington and was pretty much underwhelmed by the amount of um, work that was being thrown at me. That's what they want to do. They have no knowledge of other things really. And it's also a matter of sort of figuring out whereabouts you want to go within the industry because there's so many different opportunities out there. I mean you can't just graduate and, and know exactly where you want to be. You're never going to have a long job with somebody. So it's not kind of like a corporate interview process where you'll go through and have an HR person help you choose the right person. So you kind of have to get onto it pretty quick and get the people who you can who are on the ground for a couple of months and they have to run with whatever you need them to do without causing you trouble. I've only been working in the industry for a year or so and I'm sort of been working um, sort of in, in, in entry level sort of positions. At Parliament it's tape, it's tape operating um, and logging and things like that so it's nothing too exhilarating but the whole time you're sort of getting to watch other people do their thing, you're getting to see how a whole production comes together, you're making contacts and you know, learning about all the equipment. At the moment I'm just um, writing down the time code of um, who's, speak, who's speaking at what time um, and logging it um, for archiving purposes. I'm starting at Good Morning um, and in a couple of weeks. I'm really excited about that. That's um, going to be Green Room Host and that's um, basically liaising with the talent and looking after them. I was up at 5.45 this morning. No, I, won't, I, don't, you know, I won't be home till half ten. It's quite tiring but you know, learning, learning heaps so it's good. I reckon that um, the film industry is like kind of seen as a man's world. Because all the directors who have made it big are male. Oh, I think there's plenty of female directors actually. Every time you look on the, um, the back of the DVD cover it's, it's a always male. a male. I don't, I don't even know the names of any female directors. I think there are quite a few. I mean I think there's probably you know, if you looked up the data book, it's probably two-thirds a third. You don't hear big names like Steven Spielberg or that other guy, <laughs> George Lucas. Like, all the big names I know are all male. I've never even heard of a female. The Australian's always on the go with something. Um, Annie Goldstein directing docos. There's a lot of people doing documentary directing. A lot of directors. Probably more doco directors are women than males.
I'm sure they are. Like, sure they probably they are. are. I'm sure there are, but like for some reason I just have never heard of them. Nikki doesn't like me when I direct because she she just wants to kill me because I get quite bossy. But I, I can't help it because I mean I know how I want the story to go and like I know what the shot like how I want the shots to look. Um, I have noticed that there are more men, but they have all been extremely supportive. Uh, I've had absolutely no um, issues at all. I actually have to make sure that I get a kind of even-ish number without without kind of saying, oh, I'm going to definitely have 10 girls and 10 boys. But I generally have more girls than boys who want to do production. I will admit I have lost jobs, be not lost jobs, I have um, not gotten jobs because I have a child, you know, some jobs where you know you're going away and things like that, and that, that's fine because the fact is um, it probably would have been a nightmare for me and for my son anyway. You know, boys have to go camera, you know, grips, electrics, all those sort of areas, and all women go into the office. The creative side though, too. Yeah. So it's directed art department, makeup of course, costumes. Yeah. All the girls I know are um, well, they're not like complete bums and they don't do anything. Like they've all done something really, really easy and like really, really quick. Like mm. um, a couple of them have done IT and a couple of them have done beauty courses and a couple of them just went straight into working. You talk to teenage girls versus teenage boys, boys are downstairs on their computers playing games, girls are not. Either texting or I don't know many girls that. Well, I don't know many girls, first of all. <laughs> girls are not interested in sitting in front of computers all day, basically. I could sit in front of a computer for ages and just play around with video footage and not realise it's like five in the morning. I don't think it's because they can't or because they are not well, encouraged. It's just. I think it's our size. <laughs> Weird. I'm so abnormal. If at the end of your career you look back and you think, you know, bugger, I didn't get to do the things that, you know, because of, I got blocked here, I got blocked there. Um, I don't know what you can do about that other than sit back and say, at least I tried. Who knows what even will be television by the time I'm 60? Will there even be television? Will it all be holographic stuff on the internet? I mean, you don't know. But, um, yeah, I intend to hang in there. <laughs> This is like a real big dream, but I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to build a school for underprivileged kids. Maybe not just them, but everyone, but for them to be able to come to a place and learn stuff like this. And I was thinking maybe incorporating film with it, like filming wherever I go. I don't know, I've always wanted to do this because when I was 11, I used to be really good friends with this guy, this boy. And um, he was really good at maths, but he couldn't afford it. He was always out on the streets begging and, and prostituting. And he saw my book and he was like so happy. He was like, it was all simple stuff. It was like two plus two, three plus three. And it was stuff that I struggled with because I'm not very good at maths. He just like hooned through the book. 
he it was this thick maybe but he just did everything and I was like wow that's amazing you know I was like actually shocked because I get the privilege to go to school even though I hated it that's why I left and someone like that doesn't can't because his parents can't afford to send him to school and ever since then I've just always wanted to do help people like that it might change later on but it's always going to be my main thing that I want to do I really want to be able to go places and build homes and maybe eventually get that school and and make films about it but I know I'm going to need so much help you know I can't do this by myself but I definitely am going to try my hardest to at least achieve it even if I'm like 60 years old you know so that's really what I want to do after I finish my studies Thank you.